Well, here's, here's the topic. Ways that Holy Ghost worship is different, say is different, is different than Christianity. It differs. Who's God in the earth today? The Holy Ghost. Who's the only God in the earth today? The Holy Ghost. So Christianity's kind of left that part out of it. Well, that's where you have to get to to be a Holy Ghost worshiper. So the point number one of ways that the Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity is number one, worshiping the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost worship. Say Holy Ghost worship. Holy Ghost worship. Well, is the Holy Ghost God? Yes. Should you worship God? Yes. Absolutely. Well, therefore, Holy Ghost worship is worshiping God in his dispensation in the earth today. Christianity doesn't do this. In fact, they generally preach against it. Christianity doesn't worship the Holy Ghost. In fact, it precedes against it, and its doctrine reinforces this belief or disbelief. Holy Ghost worship worships the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost worship begins to separate, say separate, separate, separate you and transform you into full receptivity of who God actually is. Who is God? The Holy Ghost. And he's in the earth today, and when you worship him, he begins to transform you. Are you here? Mm -hmm. When you worship the Holy Ghost, he begins to rebuild, separate, and establish you into the full receptivity of him as God in the earth today and all of the things that come with him in this dispensation, which you can't get to without Holy Ghost worship. Ways in which the Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. Number one, we worship the Holy Ghost. Number two, their Lord is in heaven. Who's Lord? Christianity's Lord is in heaven. Jesus died, went to heaven, therefore I get to die and go to heaven. This is their gospel. This is where they're at. This is what they're looking forward to. This is their great hope that they die and go to heaven. You mean uh, Holy Ghost worshipers don't go to heaven? Yeah, but that's an afterthought. That wasn't the reason that Jesus came and died in the first place. It was so you could be clean of your sins and walk with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's look at verse 17. Remember, their Lord is in heaven. Verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Other translations say, where the Spirit is Lord, there is liberty. Where the Spirit is Lord. Mm -hmm. Who's the Spirit? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Now the Lord is the Spirit. This is where Christianity hasn't got, because their Lord went to heaven and they're looking forward to dying and going there. The point is for you to walk with God in the earth today. Number one, Holy Ghost worship. Number two, their Lord is in heaven. Our Lord is where? Here in the earth. Ways that Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. Number three. Christianity begins by receiving Jesus. Have you ever heard this? A personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus in your heart. There isn't a single scripture that says that. Not a single apostle ever received Jesus into their heart. The language itself is unscriptural. Well, if that's our foundation, where's that going to leave us? In the wrong place with the wrong foundation. Christianity begins by receiving Jesus. Holy Ghost worship begins with Jesus leaving you. Why is that? Let's look at that in John John. Chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus speaking. It is profitable or expedient for you that I go away. Say that I go away. Yeah, I go away. Did Jesus go away? Yes. yes. The problem with Christianity is that it's preaching a gospel where Jesus didn't. He's alive. Am I saying that Jesus isn't alive? No. But he's alive and he's in heaven seated at the right hand of God and he sent in another. Let's read on. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Then he goes on to say, he will do this, he will do that, he will do all of these things. Go back to chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 16. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another. Say another. Another, another means the, another of the same. Jesus to them was their 
leader, teacher, and guide. He said, I'm going to send you another, and it's going to be more profitable for you. One like me. Did he send thee another? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Christianity begins by receiving Jesus. Holy Ghost worship begins when Jesus left you. Because he said, if I depart, I will send another. So obviously, we have to have Jesus go away and be departed to fully, say fully, fully, fully receive the another. The problem with Christianity is even those who, who believe in the Holy Ghost being sent, they have not can't fully embrace him because their foundation is wrong. They haven't fully let Jesus go. I'll tell you this. The Holy Ghost spoke it to me last night. Very strong. He said, you didn't get the idea of Pentecost. I came into the earth. New dispensation. New day. Who came into the earth? Holy Ghost. That's the idea of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Jesus left. On the day of Pentecost was the beginning. Yes. Holy Ghost worship begins with the Holy Ghost. It begins with Jesus leaving and the Holy Ghost coming. Let's look at get born again. By receiving Jesus into your heart? No, by believing that Jesus was raised from the dead and receiving the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Do you see how the foundation is different? Yeah. Ways that Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. And the point here is that if you start off with the Holy Ghost, you end up walking with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today. Reasons that Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity number four. They are disciples of Jesus. Well, they're supposed to be disciples of Jesus. In a way, we take the things that he said. If they were a true disciple of Jesus, they would have let him go away and receive the one that he sent. Holy Ghost worshipers are disciples of the Holy Ghost. He's the another that Jesus sent. John 14, 16. I will send another. Another what? Another teacher. Another leader. Is the Holy Ghost a teacher? Is the Holy Ghost a leader? Yes, he's the one who's supposed to be teaching and leading in the church. Who are we, therefore, disciples of? The Holy Ghost. This sounds like heresy. You know, I could say the same thing about you. <laughs> the things you're saying sounds like heresy. Show me one place in the Bible where it said, receive Jesus in your heart and you'll have a personal relationship with him. How do we turn the whole gospel into that? Would we try to dumb it down so we can trick people into dying and going to heaven? <laughs> That was never Jesus' plan or ministry. He came, remember John the Baptist said, Jesus is going to come. I'm, gonna, I'm baptizing you so that you can receive Jesus. Jesus is going to come baptize you in what? The Holy Ghost. He's going to put you into, fully immerse you into the things of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. You can't be fully immersed into the things of the Holy Ghost without Jesus leaving. Yep. Ways in which... Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. It enables us to fully embrace and fully receive and appreciate the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today in the new dispensation where Christianity limits that and doesn't even allow it. It blocks it. Therefore, it's blocking you from what? Now the Spirit is Lord. There is liberty. It's blocking you from a certain amount of liberty. You may have some liberty, but it's limited liberty. Reasons... The Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. The finished work of Christ. What do you mean the finished work of Christ? What does finished mean? It's finished. It's completed. It's over. It's done. Jesus isn't healing anyone anymore. A lot of people aren't going to like this. Jesus isn't healing anybody anymore. He's not saving anybody anymore. He's not delivering anybody. He's not prospering anybody. Isn't this a great message? Why would that be? Because he left. Who's the one doing it in the earth? The Holy Ghost is doing all of those things in the earth. Christianity can't fully embrace the finished work of Christ because it's not finished. Mm. Are you seeing this? Yep. It's either finished or it's not. Let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse, verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth, Say henceforth, henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. 
Sanctified means made holy, so you can walk with the Holy Ghost. What did Jesus do, though? He made the offering one time and then went and sat down. Say sat down. Sat down. That means he's finished. He's not doing it anymore. He did what he was supposed to do. He sat down, then he sent the another. Where are we today? Having received the sacrifice, we walk with God, the Holy Ghost, in the earth today. What does finished mean? It's done. It's finished. He's not healing anybody. Who heals people in the earth today? The Holy Ghost. In fact, one of the gifts is what? The gifts of healings. Who works miracles in the earth today? The Holy Ghost. He's the miracle worker. Who's God in the earth today? The Holy Ghost. It's receiving the fullness of what Jesus did by letting him go and sit down. If he's not seated, then you're asking him to do something else, and he's not going to. The finished work of Christ. It's over. It's done. Ways how Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. Full transfer of dispensational authority. Christianity hasn't received this because Jesus is, Jesus, remember, Jesus is alive and you receive him in your heart. You have a personal relationship with him. No, he went into heaven. The same Jesus will return, right? He went into heaven and he sat down. It's done. Fully received what he did. Then he sent in another. We're supposed to have full Say full. full. Full receptivity of the transfer of the dispensational authority from Jesus to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, who said something? The Holy Ghost said, separate unto Jesus, the one who you've received in your heart and you have a personal relationship with. No, he said, separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Who called Barnabas and Saul? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Yep. Who's telling them to separate them? The Holy Ghost. Remember, I said when you begin to worship the Holy Ghost, as they worshiped the Lord and fasted, he's going to begin to separate you. So he separated them unto the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Full embracing of the dispensational authority of the Holy Ghost to lead, guide, teach. You become a disciple of his. You do what he said. Who is he being led by, discipled by, trained by? Who had full dispensational authority in the earth? According to Paul, the Holy Ghost. Ways in which Holy Ghost worship is different from Christianity. Full transfer of dispensational authority. I will mention Moses and Joshua. Remember Moses. He got up to the promised land. And what God, God said, you can't go in there because you did some stupid stuff in the wilderness. Sorry. So what did Moses do? He was told to lay hands and have full transfer, full transfer of the authority from him onto Joshua. And Joshua was to go in. And what happened to Moses? A type of Jesus in this specific instance. He went away. Say, he went away. Were people following Moses anymore? No, and that's one of the reasons, if you read the scriptures, it says he had to go away, Other people, otherwise people would keep going back to him. Yep. Is it a type of what happened? Yeah. Going into the promised land. The promised land is not heaven. Because the promise is the Holy Ghost, if you remember. He's the one that was sent into the earth. The ways in which Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. Number one was Obviously, worshiping the Holy Ghost. It's different. We worship the Holy Ghost. Two, their Lord is in heaven. Where's our Lord? Here in the earth. Now the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit is Lord, there's liberty. Number three, they begin by receiving Jesus into their heart. We begin with the Holy Ghost and end up with the Holy Ghost. It begins with Jesus leaving you. Ways which the Holy Ghost worship is different than Christianity. Four. They become disciples of Jesus. We're disciples of whom? 
the Holy Ghost, the another that Jesus sent. Number five, the finished work of Christ. If it's finished, it's got to be finished. It's either finished and it's done, he's done, he sat down, or he didn't. If he sat down, he's not up, he's not doing anything. Who is he sent the another? The Holy Ghost. So we're able to fully embrace the finished work of Christ where Christianity, it's impossible for them to. Mm -hmm. Full transfer, first transferal of dispensational authority. You should try to say that. <laughs> say full, full. Transferal, transferal of dispensational, of dispensational authority. authority. Christianity doesn't go there. They can't have the full transfer. We are walking. Say, I, I am walking. Am walking. In the, in the fullness of the Holy Ghost's Holy Ghost. dispensational, dispensational authority, authority. As, God as God in the earth today. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. Holy Ghost, your God.